What's up guys, I'm Cheyenne, that tall book girl. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have some all-consuming romances to share with you. I don't wanna go, cause your love is what I want, babe. I feel like this is one of those tropes that it's very easy for me to recommend because I read a lot of, well, I try to find a lot of angsty and all-consuming romances. Um, those are like really my favorites to read and they can be forbidden, they can be emotional, they can be a lot of different things, but I really want to be swept away in a story and um, yeah, so I, I read a lot of that. So I feel like I'm constantly having new recs for that. So you can call this angsty, you can call this whatever you want, but these are books that you will not be able to put down and that will leave you thinking even when you're not reading. And I feel like that's the goal as romance readers, we want to be swept away in a romance. So let's go ahead and get into the recommendations. All right, so the first book I'm gonna recommend, and this is one that I haven't talked about in a while, which I'm very excited to share, is If This Is Love by Julie Ann. Um, it's no secret how much I love Jules' books. I do feel like she writes an emotional and angsty story so well. Um, and her, her storylines are very unique. We're following Milo and Indy, and Indy has, Grown up being raised by these adoptive parents, she loses her adopted mother. And really she was like the only one that she was close to. Like her adopted mother was the only one as far as like those parents who really showed that she actually cared. Um, she's never really had that relationship with her adopted father. And um, there are reasons why that you find out later on. Um, and this is a romance between Indy and the ranch hand that works for her adopted parents' ranch. Now, she is a lot younger. I believe this is like a 10 year age gap, which is not like super young, but when you're like a child and he's an adult, um, you know, that that's definitely a big no-no. <laughs> so um, it's not until they're a little older where temptations start to come about. And this story is so much more than just this like forbidden love that they have for each other. Um, Indy has a cousin who is kind of courted to, well not kind of, is courted to marry Milo. And it's not until Indy's a little older where she's just like, I'm not okay with this. And she decides to move away. Now they have all of this like push and pull between them over time, like this distance between them, but distance makes the heart grow fonder and really just struggling to navigate these feelings that they have for each other, but also the reality of the situation they're in. And there are so many other factors going on in their lives that really do prevent them to be together. So very much right person, wrong time. Um, it's like one of those things where you just hope that one day they will end up together and your heart is breaking for them because of all of the things holding them back. And it's, it's, it's really, which I love reading about it, but it's really difficult to read a romance where a couple wants to be together so badly and is stuck in a situation that they feel helpless in. And I really felt like that reading this one. So you should definitely pick it up, especially if you love the cowboy romance. Um, I don't love small town and I loved this book. And I, I don't think I would necessarily consider it small town. It's a little more, I don't know, just trust me, read it. All right, and then the next book I'm gonna recommend is Arranged by R.K. Lilly. If you're a fan of an arranged marriage, hence the title and Marriage of Convenience, definitely read this book. This is one of those books that is under 300 pages and it is just packed with angst and drama. Um, I had so much fun reading this and it was one that I was not really expecting to like as much as I did. Um, we're following Nora and Banks. Banks comes from a very wealthy family. He is a billionaire and um, his family has close relationships with Nora's family. Now, things aren't all the way that it seems on the outside looking in. And Nora is a very strong and very independent woman, which I loved her character. I feel like for someone who is really struggling, she showed a lot of strength in that struggle. And she decides to put aside her pride and ask for help from Banks. They end up having a marriage of convenience situation where Truthfully, they were always arranged to marry each other, but they decide to take it into their own hands and make a deal with each other for money for Nora in this case. Now she has reasons why she needs it. There are things going on in her life and things going on in Banks's life that really make this like an opportunity that can be worth it to both of them. Um, and you see kind of like unequal powers become an equal power. Um, it did remind me in a way of Fake Empire by C.W. Farnsworth, but different but different and if you can deal with like true true angst between a marriage of a couple that really does not love each other and like some infidelity some it, but it, it's worth it in the end and some like good grovel i think you'll really love this book all right and then we have gratify by caitlin taylor in this book we're following andromeda andromeda <laughs> and atlas i cannot say words right what are words they lose me constantly but this is just a very strange name i don't know <laughs> 
sometimes that can take me out of a story, but in this case, it did not. Um, our heroine in this one, that's what I'm going to call her, our heroine in this one, because I don't feel like repeating her name over and over again. Our heroine in this one, she tragically loses her parents in the beginning. And I, so this is on page that you see her lose her parents. So if you have triggers for death of a loved one, especially parents, um, maybe rethink reading this or maybe just go into it slowly with that in mind. Um, she loses her parents tragically and she ends up finding comfort in their best friend Atlas. Now she's always been close to Atlas. They've always had this like more intimate relationship since she's been younger. Like they've just had this unspoken connection, kind of like, um, if you've read the Kane series by Shonora Williams in that sense, um, but never really acted on it. Like it was just very juvenile until it's not juvenile and until she's starting to see him differently. But Atlas also happens to be her ex-boyfriend's father. Now she caught her ex-boyfriend cheating on her and she is pissed. She is pissed. Not pissed to the point that she wants revenge, but just like, why did I waste my time with someone like this who clearly didn't care about me? And she confides in his father, in her grief and in her losing of her boyfriend. So this is where their relationship starts. And this is so angsty. This book, okay, I really appreciated it in the angst sense because they fight it for a long time. Like I, one of the things that I cannot stand in forbidden romances is if there is nothing at stake and they, within 20%, they're already hooking up. You have no willpower, sir. You have no willpower. And in this case, they did. And when the man asked her to crawl to her, well, demanded her to crawl, I was like, sir, you deserve an award. First off, for fighting it for so long. And then there's a lot of like jealous tension between like her being asked out by this other guy, her going on dates. And I just love that. I love that. I love when he's like, where have you been? And like, she shows up back at her house and he's like, where are you? Where have you been? I'm losing my mind over you. And this is that kind of book that fully sweeps you away in that angst and that's just like agony that you feel when they're not together. Next book I'm gonna share is The Favor by Suzanne Wright. This is a book I actually just read. This is an older book. I'm not even sure the year it was published, but I know this book has been around forever because of the cover. Um, and actually when I bought the physical copy of it, I bought the discreet, which I still don't really love, but I, you can just tell it's dated, but the writing does not feel that way. And this book is just incredible. I don't know why I waited so long to read it, um, highly recommend the audio too, if you are an audiobook listener. But we are following Vienna and Dane. And Vienna is Dane's personal assistant. She has been for a lot of years. Um, not long ago, Dane ended up doing something on behalf of Vienna to help her with an ex that she was having all these issues with. And he really did save her in a I, I mean, in a very good way, like she, she owes it to him. She feels indebted to him. And at that point when he did that for her, he's just such an arrogant prick that he was like, you know that you owe me. And when I'm ready for that debt to be paid, you're going to have to pay up. So she knows that it's coming. And Dane approaches her one day because he is in a little bit of a pickle and he needs some help and asks her to fake marry him. Well, not really, well, <laughs> actually marry him, but be his pretend legitimate wife for a year. So she has to stay married to him for a year and then they can call off their marriage. Secretly, she has always kind of loved him. And I think Dane is one of those people who has never really like faced his feelings head on and has just always been like consumed by everything else going on in his life, especially to never really even notice Vienna and until they're in forced proximity and they marry each other. And all of a sudden they're together all the time and they start seeing sides to each other. That is just, y'all, the tension in this, the forced proximity part too is what gets me where they're just constantly together and there's like no way out. There's no way out. It's just so good. It's so, so, so good. So Marriage of Convenience, which is one of my favorite tropes. I guess I kind of could have done a video on Marriage of Convenience, but you're getting like all of my favorites in this, in this sense. Um, yeah, highly recommend this. So worth it in the end. I love the way the ending tied up. I just have zero complaints about this book, so definitely read it. And then the next book is one that I read recently as well, and that's A Little Complicated by Kelsey Ray. Um, Kelsey Ray is an author who I have seen here and there and typically with new authors, I'm not hesitant to read new authors. I'm not, I really like discovering new ones, but when you have a cover that looks like this, it's just so discreet and it gives nothing away. I don't gravitate towards that because I'm like, this doesn't scream sports romance. This doesn't scream angsty. This doesn't scream dark. It doesn't like, I don't even know. 
I have no idea other than like what's in the heading. So, but I'm very happy that I read this book and I think you guys will like this too. We are following our heroine Ophelia who goes by Opie and then um, Maverick and Archer who are brothers. We go back when Ophelia's in high school, we have like a short little flashback where she is secretly talking to this mystery man, so she calls it, this guy that she's been seeing and um, head over heels for him, head over heels for him, but nobody knows who he is. So he's supposed to show up to take her to prom and he ends up bailing on her and like ending things with her cold turkey. She's heartbroken. She's like, I, I can't believe it. You know, the whole heartbreak spiel. Well, in swoops Archer, who is her best friend. And he's like, hey, I'll take you to the prom. And you know, so she's like, she's like, okay, like you're my best friend. You've always shown up whenever I needed you. Um, and then Archer tries to make his moves and they start dating. Now, here's the kicker is the mystery man is Archer's brother. So they end up going to college together after they graduate high school. So prom has passed. They go to, you don't see all of that, but it just fast forwards. Um, prom has passed and they're going to start college. Ophelia is dating Archer and they end up moving into this big house on campus with also his brother Maverick. So Ophelia is reunited with Maverick again since he dropped her. And this is where like all of the crazy and love triangle craziness starts. So Ophelia is very much like caught in between a rock and a hard place with her feelings for well, that are starting to develop for Archer, but really still are more in the friend zone. And then also like her feelings for Maverick that have always been there. But Archer does not know that her mystery man was his brother. It is angsty. It is hot. The tension is so high and it is a sports romance too. So if you like hockey, um, Maverick, he plays hockey in Ophelia is also a female hockey player for the college. So they do a lot of like drills and things like that together. So it's really cool to kind of see that aspect. I love when we have a female who is like high in sports and, um, Ophelia is definitely that. So this is a really fun read, very angsty, very sad. I saw my eyes out, go into it with caution because, and please check triggers as always. Next book I'm going to recommend is I need to hate you by Genesis. Um, in this book, we're following Kala and Ace, and Ace is a underground fighter. He is MMA, bad boy, like wrong side of the tracks, just is known for being this notorious player. And Kala is trying to start over. <laughs> She's the daughter of a sheriff. She tragically lost her mother, and she doesn't really know how to process her feelings and is still grieving and just is trying to think like more so in the headspace of getting away, going to college, doing something for myself, trying to like entertain my thoughts will help me grieve and for not forget, but move on a little better in a more healthy way. So she goes to college and that's where she meets Ace for the first time. Now, right off the bat, Ace hates her. Kala has no idea why. She has no idea why, but she's like, oh, this dude wants to hate me. I'm gonna hate him right back. So this is like strong hate to love. Like he really is just so mean, is so mean to her. And this is the first book in a trilogy. So the first book kind of like goes, a, it's a little slow to get into because they really are establishing this like severe hatred for each other. And you're trying to figure out why, but also Cal is like, F you dude, like I'm, I'm here for me. I'm not here for you, but they can't stay away from each other. And they keep finding themselves in positions where they're stuck together. So very angsty, um, very emotional. Like I said, it's just one of those ones where you think you know what happened, but you don't, or, but you do, I, you just, you just got to go into it with an open mind and go in blindly. I think that's truly the best way to approach it. So I feel like there's not too much I can say, but, um, there's a reason why Ace hates her so much. And the next book I'm going to recommend is The Love of My Next Life by Britt Benson. Now this is the first book in a duet, The Next Life duet. We are following Lennon and Macon and Macon is Lennon's best friend's brother. So there's already this kind of like, you can't touch him. He's my best friend's brother. Like he's off limits kind of thing. And for some reason, Macon is very mean to Lennon. He is definitely like her bully and the one who's always like tormented her and tortured her. And Lennon has just kind of learned to take it, but she also like fights back and is a little spitfire herself. Now she ends up needing some help in classes and Macon is the one to help her. So we start here, but then it moves on. So they're not always in high school, just, just so you know for that, because I don't typically read high school romances, but this is one of those ones where you do forget that they're young in the beginning. And this is where their romance starts. And that's all I can say. That's all I can say. You just have to trust me and <laughs> how great this duet is and how angsty it is. And there is so much standing against this couple 
that it, it's almost like they're never going to work. They are never going to be together because the universe is like out to get them and doesn't want them to be happy. Um, but you start to just feel how perfect for each other they are, even though they don't even know it yet because their chemistry is just electric. And I think that they, they truly do have to see that for themselves and stop caring about what other people think and just do what's best for them. High, high tension, high tension, hot, fun, a good time. All right, and that is all I have for my all-consuming angsty romances. I hope you love these recommendations and hope these give you like new books to add to your TBR and to read soon. Um, these are some of my favorite books. Catch me for all of the good angsty romances because that is my jam. Um, that's all I have. Let me know in the comments a angsty romance that you have read recently that you read and loved and I will check it out for myself. Um, leave me a broken heart emoji and that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.